Measuring the time that a fast moving pendulum takes to swing one way and then swing back the other way, that's the period of oscillation as it's called, can be quite a challenge if it's moving very quickly. Us humans have a reaction time, about 0.2 seconds, and that can be quite a large proportion of the, the time, and so the error on our timings can be quite significant. So how could we do this more accurately? We're going to describe a simple experiment, some apparatus, some variables to measure and control, and the calculation. So first of all, the time period of a pendulum is the time taken for it to swing one way and then back to where it started. You can measure the time from the center line called the fiducial point if you want, but it's probably easier to start timing when it's at one end. Okay, so a, a neat way of doing this is to measure the time taken, not for one swing, but for 10 swings or 20 swings. And then at the end, we can divide by 10 or 20, and that will give us an average time for the period of this pendulum. And this assumes that the the period remains the same no matter how much it's swinging, which is approximately true for a pendulum. So let's start off by listing some apparatus. And we simply need a stopwatch, a, a mass on a string, plus a clamp, clamp stand. So we can create our own pendulum. And we may also want a ruler as well, as you'll see in just a moment. So now some variables that we need to consider. And first of all, we have the ones we're going to measure. The measured variables are the dependent variables. And so here we're going to measure the time taken for, let's say, 10 complete swings. Complete swings. And a complete swing is called a single oscillation. What about some variables we need to control? Well, if we were to do this experiment again, we must make sure that we have the same conditions. And so we would want to control the length of the pendulum. That has a direct effect on the period. So we'd keep that the same. We would also perhaps want to keep the mass the same size. Size of the mass. And the reason for that is, if it was a bigger mass the next time we did this experiment, we might find that the air resistance changed. That might affect the period. So I'll just put in brackets, air resistance. Keep that the same. And we probably want the same initial displacement from the center line. So we probably want to measure that and make sure that it's the same distance each time we do the experiment. The calculation we would do once we've measured 10 swings backwards and forwards would be fairly straightforward. We'd have the time for 10 oscillations or cycles divided by 10. And that would give us the average period of the pendulum. Easy as that. There are some other examples where we might need to measure uh, a lot of things and divide by those number of things in order to get an average and a more accurate measurement. For example, if you were to try and find the thickness of a page, then 
We could measure the thickness of a page, perhaps using a micrometer screw gauge. Alternatively, you could get yourself a, a lot of the pages together and measuring perhaps with a millimeter scale ruler, the thickness or the, the width of all of these pages. And let's say that we measured that to be uh, 20 millimeters. And if we know that there are 170 pages in this book, and we'd have to make sure that the air gap between the pages is minimized, obviously, so making sure that the book is closed tight, we would then be able to estimate the thickness of the page simply by dividing 20 millimeters by 170. And if we did that, we'd find we'd get about 0.12 millimeters, which is about right for a sturdy piece of paper. So that's another example where you might want to divide by a large number of things in order to find an average measurement and a more accurate measurement as well.